my question is, how do you go from your family? How do you go from a normal lifestyle? How do you go from day-to-day -day activity? And now all of a sudden, your normal routine, day and night, is in total. And people are trying to help you. They're trying to arrest you to bring you in. But your development has been arrested. So now you no longer desire to be free. Your dysfunction is normal. Ooh wee! Wow. What a kamikaze to be in. What 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 dangerous it is to be in the waters with someone who don't desire to be free. Ooh wee! To be hooked up with somebody that don't want to be free. How many of you would just want to be free? So they tried to bind him. He snaps it off. They tried to shackle his feet. He kicks that off. He wants to walk around in ignorance and darkness in a graveyard. And from his inside, it looks normal. But from the outside, it's very dysfunctional. And it's funny how when we are in dysfunctional situations, we can see everybody's except for our own. We turn a blind eye, and we don't see that we in here with a necrophilia mentality. We want to talk to dead people. We want to sleep with dead people. We want to have intercourse with dead people. This is what this man does. He's living in the graveyard. So he's having relations with dead things. And he's learning the behavioral patterns of dead people. My pockets look like they used, well, back in the day. Praise the Lord. I'm rich now. My pockets back then looked like whoever I was hanging around. Amen? You hang around five broke people, you're going to be number six. You hang around five retarded people, you're going to be number six. You hang around five stupid people, you're going to be six. You hang around five weak people, you're going to be number six. You can't change the laws of the universe. So Jesus saw that this dysfunction was going on, right? So now, now could imagine when a man get in a situation where he's overcome. He's submerged in it. It's dangerous for him to be there. It's, I, you know, I don't know my way out. I wish I could get out. And so day and night when you can't get out and you really desire to get out, you become frustrated with yourself. Because when you're in a situation, it's easy to blame parents. It's easy to blame you was molested. It's easy to blame you, you know, this happened. That happened, it's easy, man, I'm here because of, you know, if they would have loved me, if they would have just treated me right, if somebody would have held me and told me they loved me, if somebody would have done all these things, I'm in here, I'm 400 pounds because of that. I'm broke because of the white man. The white man, he always, 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 always. <laughs> That's the reason why I ain't got what, you know, white man always keep black man down. My wife don't let me sing those songs. She don't let me st statistically, you know, give her my presupposition on why black men are failing in America. She always hit me with, no, 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 no. It's a choice. You choose to be broke. You choose to be whatever you are. It's a choice. I'm helping here, babe. <clears throat> My thoughts in general is choosing to be free over being bound is always the higher road. The problem is sometimes when we make the choice to be free, the conditions are not right us to be free entirely because God knows that if I change the outer perimeter and make your outside free, you'll still be bound on the inside. If I make all the white people give you reclamation, reclaiming my identity, reformation, reforming our culture, restitution, Head back to me all my wages of damages and losses. And I get all of that money. You know what? And 
didn't do us like they done the native people. Put them on their, their uh, you know, what do you call them out in the bottom? Reservations and give them casinos and create currency and let them, you know what? The dysfunction that's in us is not in them because they multiplied and began to grow. But if you put us and give us all that money, what are we going to do? Because you see it on TV. We'll get fake, fake uh, uppers and fake backside and fake teeth and <clears throat> buy your foreign car, European, pulling up and all this stuff here, wheels and this, that, the third, and all of our money is into Christmas. Looking good. Got the big house, but you got a little mind. Got the nice car, but you can't go nowhere in your mind. So his frustration is, I, I hate myself. He said, I got to go get it now. Because now, watch this now, he's around dead people. Demons are in him. But there's a desire to be free. So that lets me know demons don't have total authority over my being. There's a desire to be free. Let me hurry up. So now I got to do something to get free. Right here, right, right? And that's what you call religion. Now, here's our point. I got to that, I said all that to get to this. Let's get ready to get good now. Touch, touch your neck, hold on, hold on. Get ready to get good. Get ready to get good. Get ready to get good right now. Get ready to get good, 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 right here. Right this point right here, good. Listen, he's in there cutting himself. What I like about him, Pastor Terry, is he don't like what other people put on him. I don't like what you put on me, but I also don't like how I feel about being here. So day and night, he's cutting it. Just, I'm, I gotta do something to get out of this. I call that religion. Religion has taught us to hate us. Religion has taught us to harm us. It never taught us to love God. Never! Ever, I don't care what you say. The God of religion, I, I, I assume not want anything to do with it now. The blab it and grab it, God, you can take care of with that thought. And both of y'all can jump in the lake, swallow a snake, come out with a belly. <laughs> I'm serving Yeshua, the true God, Jesus the Christ, the true God. I'm not following after what you say about him. I'm following after what I read and what I see. Let me let me see how Jesus would do. Let me see how his life, how he handled this. How you know Jesus, my wife was going to, you know Jesus had more to say to people like us than, than the people like the religious people. He had more hangings with people that were so-called worldly than he did with people who were up in the upper echelon of religious, the religious arena. And you know what Jesus is all. He know what he's on. Go, go to, let's go to Ephesians 2. You got it? Say I got it. Wait a minute. Ephesians 2, when you get it, when you get it, clap your hand. Okay, now, now, let's go to verse 1. Listen to this. And you have been quickened who were dead in your trespass and sin. Now, notice trespass and sin, you were dead in That's called homotheology. That means to sin, the study of sin. Homot means to miss the mark. Trespassing meaning you somewhere and you ain't got no business. That's sin, to miss the mark. When God tells you to do a thing and you don't do it, that's sin. But the Bible said, what is, not a, what is not a faith is sin unto you. So if God tell you to be somewhere and you're not there, or he tell you not to be somewhere and you're there, that's trespassing. He says, and sins, trespassing and sin. So there's two categories. There's sinful nature and there's a trespasser nature. You looking at somebody else's husband, you're trespassing. Looking at somebody else's wife, you are trespassing. Hello, somebody. Where we in times past, he walked. According to the course of this world. Now my wife is going to come in. You know what we discussed about the world. 
difference with, with the cosmos? Well, we was we was doing a, a study, and uh, <clears throat> when you say Earth and world, the difference between Earth and world, remember that? Well, the world was you said worldly. The word cosmos is there. It means the entire galaxy, the planets, and all this stuff here. But then it had a different uh, meaning to it, other than the, the, than the planets. It means be not caught up in the ways of the world, meaning the rudiments and the thought patterns and the intentions of wicked men. They said, don't be caught up in that. Don't try to get God on a leash to where you can control him through emotionalism. God is not, he's not, emo, he's not uh, human, so he cannot be controlled by his emotions. So that right there is futile and very dysfunctional to think that way. Now watch this. Let's keep going. We got a short... Uh, get, got a lot to do in a short period of time. The Spirit now working in the children of disobedience. You want to know what? Working, let me go back, read this, of course of the world, and according to the prince of the power of the air. Notice that, the prince, what, what, what did we just say? What did the word just say there? The prince of the power of the what? Air, air, air. thoughts, words, air. Okay? How the enemy use things. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So there's two entities working. My flesh and what? My flesh and my what? My flesh and my what? Okay, so what we're going to do, all right, now, uh, I need to see uh, some type of livelihood. Okay? Can you, can you lighten up a little bit? And can you just say this with me? I'm free in Jesus' name. I'm free in Jesus' name. Yeah, I ain't thinking about where I'm going. I ain't thinking about where I'm going. Not, not, not after church is over. I need to be thinking about this word right now, right? Amen. I need to think about the word right now. I need to think about the word right now because a lot of you in situations that could be a lot better if you take time to listen. All right, let me get back to this. All right, so here, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we're by nature the children of wrath. By nature, it was natural for us to be children of wrath because a lot of these different things was going on on the inside of us that we had no idea why calamity was hitting us, why different things wouldn't work for us, because when sin and trespasses steps in, it closed the door to your favor. It closed the door to opportunity. That's why God said, I must, this stuff is running through your vein. So guess what? I must renew your mind. When the mind, listen, when the mind is renewed, it sends signals to the mitochondria, the DNA, the cells. And, and here's the thing. What I discovered, my God, what I discovered that when you are under stress and you are having sex with someone, you alter the, uh, the structure of that cell and that semen that when it goes into that spouse you reproduce what you were feeling at that moment that's why a lot of children come out dysfunctional and based upon the diet of the child uh, based upon the diet of the father the diet of the father determines how healthy the child is going to be because you can transmit sickness through your semen It's not a Russian roulette. I'm on. You need to prepare to have children. It's not that me smash and dash. You need to be prepared. You need to find the right person. You can have a child with. Y'all ain't here. Oh, man. Why am I feeling like this? Maybe because babies are here. But God who is rich, watch this, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, but by nature wrath and others. But God who is rich in mercy, I thank God that he's rich in mercy. I said, I thank God that he's rich in mercy. I said, I thank God that he's yeah. rich in mercy for his great love. My God from Zion. Yeah. Whereas he loved us. Watch this. Even why, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. I'm going to stop right there let my wife get in. But just think about it. Before you ever came to the, before you even felt the anointing, 
or before you even felt the unction to come to the altar, before the Spirit of God began to dwell with you about giving your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, before then, before you even knew what Jesus was, before your parents knew, before your great granddaddy knew what your grandmama was going to look like, smell like, feel like, Amen. God had already died for every sin you would ever commit before you done it. What will religion teach you? That you are filthy rags. You need to, yeah, that's true. But you need to work. You need to do that. You need to cut yourself. You need to hate yourself. You need to cry out. You need to do that. Well, if God has already fixed it, why am I working on it? Uh -huh. Woo. Come on now. Jesus. Because what they don't do is study beyond the why. They don't go far enough to tell people the truth. Because they're afraid people are going to run loose and live wild and all this. They're scared that you're just going to create problems and all this stuff here. The same God that touches the pastor touches the pews too. He tells the people in the congregation, enough! Come on home. Not just the apostle, the bishop, hear from God. There's a sure word for God for everybody. And all the stuff that we've set up is not working. Understand, when you pick the grass up and you cut it, the, the thing that God put in motion is still working. When you look at that tree, it's still working. When you look at the air moving, it's still working. The water is still wet. You can still swim in it. It's still fish in there. It's still working. The air is still working. Birds in there. But when you get to religion, it's not working. It's not working. Wow. CC. And that joke got caught up this. Oh, don't talk about it. Didn't he Baba C got caught up in some mess? Yeah, Baba C. Yeah. Oh, Baba, Baba C. Thrown out by face. <laughs> but what do we do? We lay hands on people and not knowing the principle of laying on the hands. You don't touch no man suddenly. Right. So you, you create a prayer line to show how dynamic you are. And so you can raise a big offering after it's over. The hell with that. People are dying. And the Bible says, I hope deferred makes the mind sick. Because people are desperate, so they run to your prayer line looking for healing when there's practical ways of getting healed. Let the hands say this way. Amen. So to add to what my husband was talking about, that spirit of religion is what I'm going to just touch on for a little bit. I like the way you talk. <laughs> Turning your Bibles to Luke 18. We're going to just take a look at what that spirit of religion looks like so that you'll have a real clear understanding to what the spirit of religion is and what it does. When Jesus came through the Gospels, he came to primarily do three things. Mm -hmm. He came to preach the kingdom. He came to bring salvation. Yes, he did. And he came to destroy the spirit of religion. Those three things, yeah. right? I want you to just go in your minds with me. In the, in the world of medicine, there's a condition. It's called um, RH incompatibility, right? And what takes place during RH incompatibility is when there is a pregnant woman who is RH pregnant, I mean, who is RH negative with her blood type. She's pregnant with a baby whose blood type is RH positive, right? The mama's RH negative, the baby's RH positive. And if for whatever reason something happens and that baby's blood is released and it gets into the mother, the woman dies. Not the baby, the mom. Why? And the spirit of religion is just like RH incompatibility. The spirit of religion is sent into the church Come on. to kill, to steal, and to destroy Jesus. what God has set in place. Oh, you understand? Luke chapter 18. You know, uh, Pastor, you was talking about the man at the tomb of Gadarenes, and you said last Sunday, what got him there? How did he end up in a place, in tombs, cut himself with his hands and feet bound? How did he get there? Now, mind you, when Jesus is talking about the spirit of religion, and when he's breaking the spirit of religion, you know who he's talking to? The religious leaders. He's talking to the church. Not the sinner. Not the people in the world. He's talking to the pastor. The ministers. The prophets. The teachers. 
that's who he's addressing when he's talking about the spirit of religion. Okay? So what got him there, Pastor, is we have to look back at where how that man grew up. He grew up under the tutorage. He grew up under the leadership of these religious-minded people that told him not to respect himself, that told him not to love himself because you'll never be good enough. It told him that don't even try to keep the law because you're a sinner. Right. Spirit of religion will make you feel like you're never enough for God. Amen. And that is the most untrue statement that could ever be made. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. We're looking at the spirit of religion. Y'all got it? Amen. This is Jesus, and Jesus is talking to the preacher. Okay? Uh, it says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one, the pastor, who is a Pharisee, and the other was a publican. The publican was, uh, he was like the tax collectors. He was, he was that citizenship type of people, okay? The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with him himself. He said, God, I thank you. I give you glory, honor, and praise that I'm not as other men are. They're, they are extortioners. The religious spirit will make you not look at your nasty self, but it makes you look at the dysfunction of everybody around you. I'm glad that I'm not like the extortioners. I'm glad I'm not unjust. I'm not an adulterer like this publican is. I fast twice a week. I pay my tithes, all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not so much as lift up his eyes to heaven, but smote his breast and said, God, please be merciful to me because I'm a sinner. Verse 14, yes. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. Yes. Justified means right with God. Yes. One that exalts himself shall be abased. He'll be brought down. And he that humble himself shall be exalted. That's what one of the ways that the spirit of religion looks like. That's what it looks like. It's haughty. It's prideful. Yes. It says, look at me. I'm better than you. Yes. But even that man was a sinner. Yes. And God did not honor the fact that he paid his tithes. He went to church. He sung on the choir. He played the instrument. Cleaned up church. He did all. He cut the grass. He did all this stuff that the religious world tells you you should do in the church. But his mind and his heart was lifted up in pride. So God rejected that man. Yeah. All right, let's look at uh, let's look at another scripture. I want you to see an argument that I never saw before until I studied this. Go to John eight. John chapter eight. Saint John. And let's go down to uh, let's see where can we start. So I'm just going to skip down to verse 39 and just give you a little background. So Jesus is again talking to the religious leaders of the world. And they are somewhat having an argument. They're having a discussion about sin and about Abraham. And, and Jesus has come to set the, the, he's come to set the captive free. Right? You remember the situation where the woman was caught in the act of adultery? Huh? What did the pastor say do? The preachers. Yeah, they said kill her. That's right. what religion teaches us. Right. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, he said, you go and sin no more. Yes. Be free, woman. See, the, word, the spirit of religion does opposite of what Jesus came to do, which is to set man free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happened when the pastor saw the woman that came in? She was a whore. 
and she brought her alabaster box that she broke it and she washed Jesus' feet with her hair? What did the preacher say? Get out of here. She dirty. She nasty. But Jesus said, you know what Jesus said? He said, leave that woman alone. She is. She has a purpose here on the earth. And I have compassion. I love this woman. But the spirit of religion will say the whore don't have no place in your life. But that's not what Jesus said. Uh-huh. So here we are in verse 39. This is 8 and 39. Yeah. They answered and said, y'all got it? They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto him, if you're Abraham's children, then you would do the works of Abraham. But now you came over here to kill me. A man that have told you only the truth, which I have heard from God. This did not Abraham. Abraham didn't come to kill me. Uh, 41. It says, you do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Now, if you read that real fast, you won't get the gist of what these people are saying to Jesus. Come on. <laughs> They said to him, your mama was a whole Jesus. Yeah, yeah. You ain't even got no right. You don't even have a reason. You don't even have, the, you got the audacity to try to come up here and teach somebody? He said, we wasn't born to fornication like you was. Your mama and daddy wasn't even married when you was born, Jesus. What does the spirit of religion do? The spirit of religion comes to make you shame. Yeah. It comes to bring doubt. Yeah. The spirit of religion comes to tell you that you're not enough. The spirit of religion comes to tell you that because of what you used to do, that you don't deserve to be in this pulpit to teach. Yeah. Because of what you used to do, you can't lay hands on nobody. Because of who you was, because of how you was born, because of the things that you got caught up in, yeah. you don't have a right to teach from this holy word. They call Jesus mama a hoe. Them fight words. Fight words. Fight words. Uh huh. So the spirit of fear, I mean, the spirit of religion comes to control. The spirit of fear brings rejection. The spirit of fear has arrogance. The spirit, I keep saying spirit of fear. The spirit of religion, the spirit of religion is unteachable. Let's look at one more. Yeah. The spirit of religion comes to control. If you don't do it my way, if you don't wear this collar, if you don't do your hair like this, if you don't wear your dress down to your ankles, if you don't come up here and, and kiss my ring, we reject you. Spirit of religion. The spirit of religion comes to bring fear. Spirit of religion says that man, because you are uh, jacked up in the head, because you hear voices, you see things that are not there. We're going to isolate you over there in the graveyard because you don't deserve to be over here with us good people. And we're going to bind you into, in my mind, and this is just in my mind. When they said that they put fetters and chains on him, those fetters and chains represented that spirit of religion. Because the spirit of religion comes to bind you, to keep you from moving freely in what God has called you to do. Yeah. Uh huh. Amen. Amen. The spirit of religion is unteachable. The spirit of religion brings is arrogant. Yeah. Have you seen? You've seen it. You've seen that arrogant spirit. How they walk up in the pulpit like they dignified. Like you can't speak to me unless you have uh, an appointment, or unless you have a certain amount of money, or unless you have a certain amount of status. Uh huh. Yeah. That's that spirit of religion. Yeah. Yeah. But what we have to look at is not what our church, our Sunday school, growing up in in church. We can't look at that stuff. What it's taught us. Right. You got to look at what Jesus said, yeah. what Jesus did. Amen. Amen. And that will teach you the right way, the proper way of how to live uprightly before men, and most importantly, before God. All right. Let's see. Uh, Let's look at one more scripture, Pastor, and I'll let you. Is that not good? Let's look at John chapter 9, since we're right here in John. And uh, uh, Hold on. 
nicht fallen wird. I think I wrote the wrong one down, so I'm just going to tell you. So there was another situation where there was a young man who was blind. His parents brought him to Jesus. And his parents, uh, Jesus healed the young man. And they went about their way. They were rejoicing. Well, the religious leaders heard about this man who was once blind, but now he can see. So the religious leaders approached the parents and said to them, how did this happen? How was your son who was once blind, how is it now that he can see? Right? And because the spirit of religion brings fear, you know what they did? They lied to the religious leaders. They said, we don't know. We don't know how he got healed. But they was right there when it happened. We don't understand. We don't know how he got healed. We don't know who did it, why they did it. We don't, we don't know nothing. Why? Because they feared retaliation from the religious, the religious leaders. Jesus. The spirit of religion will teach you that it's okay for two men to get married in the church. Come on now. Jesus. And if you go against what I said, then we are going to push you out of our organization. Right. You can't be a part of what we have established here if you don't do it the way that we said do it. It brings about fear. Yeah. But Jesus came that we might live. He also came so that we can be free. You don't understand the total or the capacity of what the word free means when it comes to being away from that religious spirit. Free to worship. Free to praise God. Free to, free to honor him in the way that we see fit. Amen? All right. Uh, Mark 6 and 34 this will be my last one Mark 6 and 34 you know what why, she, go ahead. No, you, go ahead. you know what why she's saying this I want, in, in service you, you notice that <clears throat> People are free. And I'm going to say this, they get up and they walk, they leave in and out the doors. They um, become borderline disrespectful to the house, how the word goes forth. I know people have to go places and they have to do things. But we don't do this for our health. We do this, this is a sacrifice for my wife and I. You know what I mean? Just, just, I like to be in a position where Reggie and Terry has no worries. We can really take advantage of Reggie Terry by gifted by God, some, some, some smart people, intelligent people. We can make the best out of a bad situation. We don't have to be here every Sunday. We don't have to subject, that, subject ourselves to this. This is for you. Our life has been put on the line, put on display, not so that we can become uh, famous. We do this for that. We we put ourselves up here so that you can see up close and up front how God can restore someone's life without pretense. How he can change someone right in your face and watch them go through different ups and downs, ins and outs, let you see it all, and them never waver in their faith. I think a lot of the stuff we get bored with is we put, because I can, I can sense the energy in the room. I can't stand when people, when you're, when, when, when you're in the church, but you feel like you gotta go. You know that make, how that make us feel? Like you wearing, a, wearing a, us up? To get to where you go. I'm just gonna stop it and let you go. Go ahead. And and don't kill the energy in the room trying to get somewhere that people in here desperately need hope. Yeah. What do we preach for? What do we play for? This is to shift the whole paradigm of why you do things. You go into a service after this, y'all go into a service after this, what for? You ever thought about that? 
Where am I going? You need to. You going home after this? Where are you going? Somebody tell me where they're going after this. You going, you going home after this? Okay. So if you're going home, you go, Brittany said to eat. You're going to lay down, right? No. You got a rehearsal after that? All right. So when you enter into a room, and I know some for the people that are here listening and, and hanging on every word, that's this is not for you, so don't get offended and get upset with me when I say this. I'm commanding the room because I know this is important. And by discerning the spirits, me being your pastor, her being, you being leaders up here, we can, in the spirit, we can call the audience and see where the deficiency is. And know a lot of you in here are very deficient in your word intake. You don't have seven scriptures that you know automatically to help you out of the jam. But you, you, you have you have people that you get in contact with to make you feel better. And that's only temporary. It's temporal. You need to get in touch with your word, your word. But my wife just read all five scriptures. I ain't hardly see anyone taking notes. I live this. I know the ones that are taking notes, I ain't talking to you. I live this stuff. I watch my, y'all saw it, my life, phew, devil hit it, I'm sitting here, you know, I'm going crazy. But the only thing that I had to keep my life together and it's proven and, and stood the test of time was this scripture, not religious stuff. I didn't get in the floor and buy by sea and and and, 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 and 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 use magical stuff that we've been taught to try to fix my life. No, the Bible says, okay, if I'm gonna have friends, I gotta show myself friends. Amen. Okay, so if I'm gonna be blessed, I got to be a giver. And if if if, if you know if, if if I'm gonna have a healthy marriage, then guess what I gotta do? I can't I can't be watching porn. I can't be looking and, and lusting after other women. I gotta be a joke. I gotta cut a covenant with my eyes. And and when my eyes do see something that looks nice, it doesn't enter in me and to defile me. You follow what I'm saying? I don't get all caught up and, and forfeit blessings because of and I'm not saying it's by works. But there's some things that have consequences to it that, that, that could possibly hinder a, a productive life that you're desiring. God ain't, God ain't, listen, it, the, the, the will of God is for us to be safe, but if you go out there and play in traffic, it's not a sin. But there is consequences if you, if you go and play, you can't get hit by something that could take your life or put you in a situation that could, you know, alter life as you know it. So, how many here with a disciplined ear, not ready to see Reggie and Terry perform? Come here to just be ready, be apt, to, you know, be apt to hear something that's going. Because what what part of your life is so perfect that you don't need to work? What part of your life is just so grandiose and so splendor and so this that you don't need anything? And you know what you need to do? You don't maturate in this thing. You need to be out there teaching folk how to get a better life. So we come together by faith, and we're believing God that God will speak something through someone this day that's going to help someone get out of those graveyards. Not for us to sit and think, oh, that was powerful, but we do nothing with it. Oh, that's a good thought, but we do nothing with it. Oh, did you hear Pastor Taylor bring that out? We do. You heard how religious look? We all can relate to that. Now, why we want to vacillate and go back and forth with something that don't work? Drop that stuff in the toilet, man. It's not working. The Benny Hens and all these things, that's not working. Amen. But we do know that the religious, the false presentation of religion, it can be erased by people that will follow after what Jesus is doing. Because people love to preach Jesus. Preach, 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 teach, 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 teach the word, teach the word. But they don't teach what Jesus taught. They just preach him. And, the, and, and, and it's funny to me. I'm going to let Pastor go on. What's funny to me, it's funny, so funny. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. I mean, it's funny how God takes upon the characteristics of whoever is talking and representing him. If that person is mean in nature, the God is mean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ain't that funny how if that person is a petty, get you back type, you know, bad body kind of person, how come God is like that? God ain't you. He's never been. He never desired to be like you. He wanted to want you to be like him. That's why he came so you can become him again, Adam. Hello, somebody. 
read the text, baby, and I got one scripture going to close it out. So I said all that to say this. Don't put an urgency in this room. You can't hurry the doctor up. You've got to go where you're going. Get there. Just know, just know this, that these are times of peril. These are perilous times that we're living in. Every word that comes out is not a word to try to impress you, to make us, you know, try to uh, convince you that we're the best church and we're the best leaders. I'm jacked up, just like you are. But right now, I, I don't care what nobody, I used to care what people think. I used to care, I, I can't say that, I can't do this, I can't, I can control my religion, the fear my wife kept talking about. Now I could give two cares about what somebody think about Reggie because I'm working out my salvation. You better be working out yours. Yeah. I found that there's more black people hating white people than white people hate black. And there's more Hispanic people hate black people than black people hate Hispanics. You've got racism in every race. You've got all this different, these different things, all the stuff that's going on in the midst of us. You better be working out your salvation and quit looking at who's white, who's black, who's this. You better be working out your love walk. You better be working out your faith walk. You better be working out your sin walk. You better be doing that. Now, Terry and I, I, I love this woman. Everything I got. God gave me one heart. I gave it to her. I ain't got nothing to give away. That's why it's so hard for women to come at me like that. Because I love with my heart, not with my, my, my privates. Some men fall, some women fall in love and soon who get it? Boy, boy, I love you. And the nigga know me. I love you too. And you got 10 different people you love it. Y'all somebody. So, 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 now I forgot my thought. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. All right, so instead of uh, Mark, let's run over since this is going to be the last one. I think this one's a little bit more befitting. Let's go to uh, Matthew 23 and 23. Matthew 23 and 23. Now keep in mind that when you read this scripture, I want you to, when it says scribes, the Pharisees, those people, that's the church. Okay? That's the church. Y'all got it? All right, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Yes. You pay your tithes. Mm. Yes, you are supposed to pay your tithes. Amen. Okay? But you're not supposed to do it in a way that's flashy. You're not supposed to do it in a way to where everybody knows, oh, they did this, they, you know, like when you're trying to show yourself off. Yeah, okay? Yeah, All yeah. right, you pay a tithe of mint, and a nice and cumin, and have omitted weightier matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith, these ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone. You blind guides, talking about the church, you strain at a net, but you swallow a camel. Oh Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, the church, you hypocrites. You make clean the outside of the cup, the cup is you, and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Yeah. You are so concerned about how you look on the outside, how you present yourself, how you preach, how you teach, how you sing, how you do, how you dance. You're so concerned with what you do and what you look like on the outside. 26, you blind Pharisee, talking about the church, cleanse first that which, with the, that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may also be clean. Woe unto you, church. For you are like unto whitened supposers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. And he continues, he goes on and on and on and on talking to the church. Now, mind you, we're talking about this man who was in the tombs of Gadarenes. What got him there? Yeah. What shaped the way he saw himself? What shaped the way that he thought about himself and about others? Yeah. What gave him the outlook on life that he had Come that on. caused him to be in a situation where demons had possessed his body? Mm. They say church is the safest place. Yeah. But is that true? Is that true? You know, Pastor? I didn't learn how to sing until I got to church. I thought I was sitting in the world. I did. I thought I was good. You know what? 
I, I, I've never known more cutthroat people in the street. I'm, I'm disloyal, disloyal people. Loyalty was a thing. And if we didn't like you in the hood, we didn't share McDonald's fries with you. Amen. Only in the church where people smile in your face, shake your hand, eat your eat, drink your drink, take your money, and spin your skin, and we'll talk about you like a dog. Amen. We'll, we'll, we'll find so many flaws in you. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm on my soapbox, but let's get past it. Will you? Will you, will you okay, let's get past Terry. All right, then we're going to go, we're gonna finish this talk. We're going to go into Q&A. All right, quick question. Where did Jesus send the, how many demons was in this man? A legion? A legion of demons? 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 Legion? Okay. All right. Where did Jesus send these demons to? Have you ever thought, okay, why did he send them to the swine? Because the name of the series is Pig's Eye, the Slave, brought by the Beast. Yes. Okay. The religion, religion, the slavery. Being controlled by a system that means you no good, designed for you never to escape, but to create hope for all an afterlife. You know, I can't wait to get to heaven. I can't even. I know heaven is real. Can't wait to get there. But religion teaches you to turn a blind eye to your life now. That you don't live abundantly. That you all is escapism and trying to get away. But have you ever thought, well, why? Why is the demon in there? And how did so many get in there? And why did he send them to pigs? Because if there's a herd of pigs, right? If there's a herd of pigs, and this is a town known for farming, there's a herd of cows, there's a herd of sheep, there's birds flying in the air, and disembodied spirits can do what? Hop from one place to the next. The book of Revelation talks about the dragon, Revelation 12, when the head was cut off, the spirit that came out of that dragon's mouth was likened unto a what? A frog. So an attribute of a frog is what does it look? It looks for comfortable, act, where it can get acclimated, comfortable places. And if it's not comfortable, it leaps from one place to the next. It doesn't walk, it hops. So that lets me know that could be a transfer of spirits. So it can go anywhere, it can hop anywhere. It could have went into the cows, it could have went into the chickens, and it could have went into, but these 6,000 demons came out into a herd of swine feeding. And this is something that there is a metaphysical, uh, 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 something metaphysical happening here is deeper than what we recognize it to be. Why, is, why do they do the experimentation with drugs and stuff on the earth? Why do they, uh, uh, you know, as, as, as when they start, uh, what do you call it when you, uh, you're in the lab and you cutting the thing open Dissect, dissect. Why do they dissect pigs? And why when they try something out? Because when I when I begin to do my research, I begin to when I study the the uh, the anatomy of a pig is very different. But its makeup and how it processes and does a thing is similar to mankind. The nature of it is similar to mankind. The appetite of it is similar to mankind. It never looks up. It's always into what is consuming without distraction. You ever notice? Whatever is good to you, you focus on it the most, and you make it your God. You don't break from that. And if a pig is in slop and eating, it's so focused on its belly, and it doesn't think about nothing else. And that's what religion teaches us. i got to make my church a mega church. Why? Because money comes in, the bottom line comes in. I've got to make my name great. Why? Because of the bottom line. I've got to get more shares. I've got to get more likes. You've got to be trending. You've got to do all these different things. And, and people play with people's lives over trying to have a big church and make a big name. But the similarities to a, a pig, let me know if you got something for my A similarity to a pig and a Mankind is somewhat similar. They have a, 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 a humongous appetite, 
for they'll eat anything. They'll 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 consume anything, and we do too. We'll consume anything, whether it be visual, uh, audible, physical, emotional, or spiritual. We'll consume it if it feels good. And that's how we judge God and how God was in. Oh man, building should. We know God is in there. What did Jacob say when he came to Bethel? He laid a he laid a rock down as his pillow, poured oil on it, laid his head on it, woke up the next morning. He said, Surely the Lord has been in this place, and I knew it not. Right. All of the stuff that we've been taught, the power of God. All the stuff that we've been taught in church is nothing but emotional theatrics. And we don't know how to relate to God anymore. We don't know how to even pray anymore. We get on our knees. Who taught us that? We bow our head and close our eyes. Who taught us that? I, that I don't, my, if my children ever came to me and tried to talk to me in a religious way, I would smack the ever-loving life into them and say, get out of my face with that retarded foolishness. Oh, Father, Father, I need to borrow a bad car. <laughs> Is there any money in the banking for me, Father? The bank really? is? <laughs> is that how you're going to have a relationship with God? God don't want you. He's an intelligent, sophisticated being. He's a bit sophisticated and intelligent, but he don't want you talking to him like that. Mm. Yes, sir. Hey, let me move on. So now the appetite, here's the thing. When... When you pour a slop into a into a trough, the pig doesn't have within its makeup, it doesn't have within its makeup to understand the difference between fecal matter and food. They consume, it could be fecal matter in the food, but they're so into their belly that they consume bacterial poison and substance at the same time. And they call it healthy. Yeah, because I'm eating is good, right? Not knowing what you put in your belly has the potential and can possibly kill you. Right, right. All right, so Jesus says to them, all right, I command you to go into the pigs. Why is God saying for the spirits to go into the pigs? I'm not the cow because the cow only eats grass. It's discipline. Yeah, yeah. You won't ever catch a cow saying, uh, give me a cheeseburger, hold the lettuce, add bacon, bacon to it. He, he, that's not in his nature. You know, even the chicken, the chicken is real. <laughs> you know, you, you'll never catch a chicken saying, hey, uh, give, me, give me some barbecue sauce. It's discipline. Even though it's a scavenger of the yard sometimes, but it's discipline in his nature. Satan only wants to go into things that are undisciplined. Lacks no control over their emotions. He even, he said, hey, 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 let me go into that. If you're going to take me out of him, let me go into that. So that lets us know that he went from one slave to the next. Are you a pig's eye? Bull's eye, right? Is Satan looking for you? Because of your lack of discipline in your finances. But you know what he said? Oh, the spirit. It's a spirit of poverty. The Bible never says anything about a spirit of poverty. Teach, Pastor. That's a lie. Teach, Pastor. Well, it's a spirit of poverty. And all these religious saying. So what that let, let people know? They can buy a spirit of poverty and lose their wealth. Wow. That's just like standing on your hands, clapping your feet and trying to walk. Right. Am I right about it? Yeah. Okay. So so now he said, go into the pig. They have no discipline and you just came out of someone that don't have no discipline. So you'd be like, you go going home. So go ahead to the pigs. Because what they have is a lascivious behavior. They, they, they do, do not have no restraint. They do not have no, 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 no discipline. They don't have no goals for their future. So guess what they'll do? They'll keep buying in a finance demon, and it has nothing to do with, 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 with spiritual poverty. You know how poverty comes? Hello? Anybody okay? Yeah. 
You know how poverty comes? Yeah. Need the whole church. Come on. Come on. You know how poverty comes? You know how poverty comes? Thank you. You know how it comes? How? How? I like your image. Y'all know how poverty I like I like the image. You know how poverty comes? How? How? A little sleep and a little slumber. A little folding of the hands. Amen. You know when your when your supernatural biological alarm clock goes off, five o'clock in the morning. Wow. What time it goes off? I can't hear the front row talk. What time it go? See so y'all ain't listening to me. <laughs> I said your bi yeah, y'all ain't listening to your fat your biological supernatural what clock goes off at five in the morning. Why? That's a prayer watch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a window of intercession session. You can get what you want to get. You can put it in the atmosphere. That's the best time to meditate. That's the best time to be sitting there doing nothing, clearing your brain out, preparing your day. But what happens? Most people stay up all night watching series. Stay up all night playing video games. I can't hear the front row talking. Can I get one amen from my front row? I, uh, thank you. Hallelujah. Stay up all night playing video games. Stay up all night doing nothing that prepares for that next day. And so the day comes, they're laying in the bed, sleep. You have just cursed yourself with poverty based upon your own sleeping pattern. A man was, Paul was preaching. This is in the book of Acts. Paul was preaching. And the Bible said that there were many lights in the house. When the Bible says there was many lights in the house, it's considered revelatory knowledge. Revelation for change. God doesn't give you a revelation for you to say, oh, that's powerful. Oh, that's good. Oh, let me put that on Facebook. Let me send that out on Twitter. Let me tweet that. Thank God, Revelation Com. Revelation Com is to break up the follow ground of ignorance so you don't another seed this song in that field. So he said there were many lights in the house, and, and, and this guy was there, and he, he was, Paul was yet preaching. The Bible said he was yet preaching, meaning he got a little long with it. And the man fell asleep. I think his name was Malchus. He fell asleep, and he fell asleep and fell out the window and broke his neck and died. You mean, Paul saw it, stopped the service, came down, raised the man up, and rebuked him. Because have you not noticed that that pig in you, it loves to fall asleep up under the word and get bored. Yeah. Hey, this take it, man. <laughs> Spiritual poverty sets in when you don't think enough of the word of God. When it comes forth. You know this ain't Reggie talking. The word of God comes out. You know that Reggie ain't doing this. But you know what? It's, it's crazy how the pig always needs someone to feed it. it. The pig always needs someone to stay with. The pig always needs somebody to give them something. The pig always needs a handout. The pig always saying, I'm getting ready to get myself together. <laughs> The pig always fed them. The pig always painting bright pictures of a future that will never become a reality. Because what you do every day is dictating and pointing at your future. You can't change what you are doing every day with good intentions. If your good intentions don't cross over and become a pattern of discipline and rules that you stick by until you get to the promised land, he said, 11 days you're going to get there. 11 days turned into 40 years for the Hebrews. Are you hearing me? So when you get to the place in your life to where you get fed up with your wilderness, and you don't want to be a pig anymore? Let's go to uh, James chapter 1. Come on. 
Say this with me. I ain't, I ain't nobody pig now. No, 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 I'm not. Come on, I ain't, I ain't no, I ain't no pig. Pig got pig now. James chapter one, verse twenty-one. Watch this. Read it, Jimmy. No, he didn't do nothing wrong. Oh, okay. I'm ready to stop the sermon and go get it. So y'all wait till I get back. Whoop that cookie. Somebody said, uh oh. See, that's that religious spirit. Huh? James chapter 1, verse 21. Read it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Was not Abram our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Lord help. James chapter 1, verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfilthy of naughtiness. Uh uh. Read that again. Yeah. Wherefore, lay apart. 21. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and super soup fluid of naughtiness. All right. Stop. The Bible said, lay apart all superfluous. That comes along with what? Naughty. 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 Somebody say naughty. Naughty. You know, folks can get naughty in the church, right? Yes, they can. Naughty. Sometimes you like a little naughtiness. As long as it's in the right vein. Come on, somebody. Amen. But anyway, listen to this. Superfluous means you go too far. You remember Pinocchio, where he would lie and his nose would go, yeah, keep lying, yeah. He did too much. It's too much. Okay, being saved is fine, but what we're going to add, you know, something else to it for? Being married is fine. Why are you going to add somebody else in the relationship? It's fun. I think we ought to have a threesome. No. Yeah. I like your wife. You like this one. Why don't we swap? You know? Huh? Listen, I, I, uh, there's some rituals that are happening in church with some of these Episcopal people that it's a pyramid scheme, a pyramid order, that the man at the top get an opportunity to sleep with whoever he wants to, and they can't say nothing about it. Oh, ain't here. I know the stuff. Why you think I ain't Come on. Yes, sir. Mm -mm. Yes, sir. You going to trade your wife out for a big stage and a car? Wow. And some money? <laughs> now, the bundles of the heart, the mouth speak. I'm praying for you to change. You playing, but I'm praying for you to change. You don't put that in the atmosphere, son. Thank you. You never say, I'm, there's no price on her. Yeah, your folly is revealing something deeper. You don't never say something like that in the atmosphere. Never how much. Mm -mm. Ain't no amount of money is worth what she is to you. Amen. Ain't no other woman either. Some men just I know it, I know it. When Pastor Terry see we see we see one well, now we get watching this show. We see something and you know it'd be like that they, they, they see somebody walk up. Now we have to do it, but somebody walk up on the show and they say, Oh, they can get it, all of it. They can get it, all of it. She can get it, all of it. You may see someone that look nice, but you have to have this one. Because, I'm going to tell you something, the, the culture and times that we live in, crazy. There are people that do too much. They go too far. They will come to church with something that they put on, look like they tore it up before they, before they got it on. <laughs> let's go, you know. You know, let's go. Amen. Yeah, I'm like, you make one move, and that's going to come all the way out, 
they be like, hey! Okay, y'all don't like my joke. <laughs> but it said, lay apart all superfluity of naughtiness. Read, Jimmy. Watch this. And we're closing. And receive yes. with meekness the engrafted word. Receive with meekness the engrafted word. Whenever you have a trauma to the skin or the derma and something you burned or something like that, they may take some skin from another part of the body and put it to that burn area and let it graft in there so that becomes one in that area. Yeah. You understand? Whenever you are, you are frustrated in your finances, frustrated emotionally, frustrated marriage, frustrated with children, you got to find, you got to humble yourself and say, where's the word? Where? Don't be asking no divine osmosis. Get you a thesaurus. Get you a, uh, and then Google is your best friend. Do, do scriptural references and researches on what I need to do to put the word in this on this part of my life Amen. that's yeah. being exposed. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Go to Joshua 10. This is the last one. Stand up. Too good. Ah! Hallelujah. Joshua 10th chapter. Jimmy, you're going to read Joshua 10. We haven't had a long service in a while. We're due for one. Amen. 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 I said we are due for one. Amen. Amen. How about C? 10th chapter. Huh? Go down to verse 10, start reading all the way through 12. Read it, Jimmy. <laughs> no, you don't. Right here. Hold on. Right here. Amen. If you think about it, then guess what? It becomes something. You get ready to miss something right here. Right. Don't think about it anymore. <laughs> Lord, this. this and the Lord has comforted them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter and chased them along the way that goeth upon to Bethhorn and smote as seekers and unto Mac. And, and it came to pass as they fled from And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Bethlehem that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon upon them unto Azur. And they died, and they died. They were more which died, which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Mm -hmm. Then spake. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered upon the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand though still upon Gibeon and the moon in the valley of Aaron. Okay, this is where you get to leave here, right? Sun standing still, moon standing still for a whole day. This is how man talked to God. This is how he talked to the elements. Watch this though. Watch this. Read. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had at, uh, avenged them, avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of okay. heaven. Stop! Stop! So this powerful act is not in our Bible. Right. This powerful act. Did you read something in there? I, I caught it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Samuel. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Limitations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Jonah, Michael, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Hagar, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew. There's no J-Shaw no. in the Old Testament. Right. Right. At all. So when I receive with meekness the word of God, religion put the Canaan together, the 66 books, which is, which, which, which is a process called crystal century meaning Christ being the center. When the books were scattered, no one knew where the books were because of Rome conquered 
not only the financial things, but the spiritual things. And it took away our revivals and gave us what's called a vulgate, a Latin vulgate, what they wanted us to know. They took away languages and gave, that's why you have the Spaniards uh, and, 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 and Africans do not have their native language. Uh, Spanish is not their native language. English is not our native, native language. You give it to us. Spain was a part of that Atlantic, uh, slave trade in there. Those people were caucus people. Come on, somebody. Yes. You understand that? So there's a different, that's why it's so important that you don't get caught up in the hype of religion because what it does is keep you in emotions to keep you dumb, so keep taking your money. And if I can keep taking your money, I can buy 300, uh, 3 million, 30 million dollar jets, live in a lavish house, and I do all of this. That's not the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost came in, he made them bring all this stuff to the table, distribute it amongst them evenly. Then the Spirit of God came in. When you have big eyes and little U's, I'm driving a Bentley and you ain't got one. I'm living in a mansion and you ain't living one and I'm the pastor. Wow. Shame on that whole thing. Wow. Now I'm not saying that if the pastor is working and on his grind and getting his yeah. and you lazy and God don't touch his heart to give you anything because of your laziness, don't be a hater. Yeah. You understand? But if I am a lazy, overindulged pig, and I build a pig pen to make sure people keep bringing me their slop. And when my trough is full and yours is empty, and I'm saying, you ain't living godly. Wow. Come on, man. So it's, now it's time for us to find out. That's why I said, man, I don't want to be T.D. Jakes anymore. I love that man, but I don't want to be Preflo anymore. Yes. I love that man. I don't want to be uh, uh, Joel Osteen and these big... These big to do people, these, these folk too much, give them much is required. Yeah. There's, there's a price to pay for that. Yes. They're saying, I need to understand how do I follow and work out my salvation for real, for real. So I threw all this stuff off. I start cursing a little bit to get religious people away from me. <laughs> but they didn't like it. I told them, I said, Mama, now God has got me an intelligent person. I'm not just up there just ran, randomly arbitrarily saying, hell, damn, and stuff like that. You heard her call back then. I'm not, I'm not saying stuff like that just to be vulgar. I need to find out where are the people who are really trying to, because you got people raised, they were raised in hell in our church trying and, and calling themselves love. And, you know, I love you, but you've got an evil spirit about you. You want to bust up my marriage? You want to do stuff and you got an evil spirit? And I see that evil spirit and you doing it in the name of God? I'm confused. Let me say this. You got 10 seconds to get off my property. I'm going to move you over. And you know what they do? You get respect. <laughs> but the ones that are really seekers, they stay around you because God has ordained and anointed them to understand, not with natural eyes, but with spiritual eyes, your process and where you go. Amen. Because if j is not in the 66, that's an indication somebody took it out. That's trying to lead and enter towards the door. You ain't going nowhere. Sit down. Go nowhere. Sit down. But amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. It's offering time. Amen. Praise God. Praise the words. Offering time. You did. I saw it. Came in on the cash. Come give me a hug. Give mama a hug now. Come on. And, and look, Pastor Anthony and Kim, they're watching. Amen. God bless you in your journey. Amen. All the, people, all the people that are watching us, that will watch us, hey man, what, what are you into? Y'all gotta hear something. I wanna go to y'all play. Who having something here so we can go to? Look at something else. We can go to nothing together. But anyway, I'll just, I'll just play it. You know, I got something. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk. No, you don't wanna do that. Now you don't work either, do you? It worked up. It worked up. It worked up. Work up and down, too. Hey, you know what? Hey, listen, I just want to say, sis, sis, God bless you. Thank you. That's the smile, the energy. You know what? Not many people will sit through uh, something like this because it's too religious. They call it carnality. You know, what's, what's considered carnal is not. You know what we're doing? We, we, we said, no, we don't want to do it Yahweh. We want to do it Yahweh. 
You know what I'm saying? We want to see God to where we got it for real, for real. And it's, that's an eternal walk. Some people have act, act, act as if they, they have arrived. They don't have arrived. We haven't. We're still in the process of finding out who God is, what his word is. He said like this, if all of the books was written concerning the acts that I've done, then the world could not contain them. Jesus said that. Where are they? I'm not saying, now this, ha this happens to hurt more people than help them. Because you know what they do? They say, no, nah, don't mess with my religion, doc. Because now that, that throws me into the category of having to mentally defend, uh, fend for myself. Religion thinks for me. Religion tells me what to do next. So I, this is, I'm not doing something that I hate doing, which is responsibility for my own mind. You know what? I said I want to be a millionaire. I, I kept saying, I'm going to be the first millionaire in my family. I said, I want to be a millionaire. I, I'm going to be a millionaire. I kept saying that. You know what I did? You know what I done? And am doing? I'm putting my mind upon the, and, and putting my head in the space of millionaires. Talking to millionaires, listening to them. And within one year, now I'm a millionaire on paper. I ain't got no problem. But I, I'd rather have it in assets than not have it at all. I am. The network. The network. I am. Pastor Terry and I, this is no lie. We yeah. are the first multi-millionaires in our family. Yeah. And can I tell you something? In less than three weeks, we close on the house over there. Y'all ain't talking about it. Y'all ain't talking about it. Huh? This will be our Sometimes it just, it's like you're pointing to point B, getting you to the place to where your yes is much deeper than where you are. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, bless this offering, bless the tithe. 
in the name of Jesus. Bless these people that will hear. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, draw hands with your neighbor. Make sure your hand sanitizer is close to you. Come on, baby. Yeah. So, you got something you want to say? Okay. You got something you want to say? I, I, I thought Jimmy shaking his head, but you got something you want to say? Jimmy, you got something you want to say? Yeah. Any questions, any comments before we go home? Anybody got anything in their spirit? In their spirit, man?